very good morning dear children let's start our today's class with a prayer god grant me the serenity to accept the things i cannot change courage to change the things i can and the wisdom to know the difference amen dear children we are going to see the 17th unit which is the first unit in biology animal kingdom by learning this lesson you will be able to understand the classification of animal kingdom you will easily identify and study the different groups of animals you will be able to list out the general characteristics of animals based on grades of organization types of symmetry coelom and various body activity you will easily recognize that binomial classification has latin and greek words you will identify the first name as genus and the second name as species you will be able to recall the salient feature of each phylum let's move on to the lesson i would like to give some more introduction so in a, in our world we can see a variety of living organisms surrounding us which is incomprehensible that that is it is extremely difficult to understand the property of each species nearly 1.5 million species of organism which have been described or different from one another each organism is different from all others to a lesser or greater extent obviously we and our friends have a lot in common when we compare ourselves with a monkey but suppose we were to add a cow to the comparison we would then think that the monkey has a lot more in common with us than with the cow if you would like to compare yourself with your friend with a monkey your friend has more similarity if you compare yourself with monkey and cow monkey has more similarity with you okay think of all the different forms in which life occurs on earth on one hand we have microscopic bacteria of a new micrometer in size while on the other hand we have blue whale and redwood trees of california of approximately size of 30 meters and 100 meters respectively some pine trees live for thousands of years while the insects like mosquito die within few days life also ranges from colorless or even transparent worms to brightly colored birds and flowers so depending on color depending on the size depending on the life span life span we can uh, classify all the living organisms Uh, the bewilders bewilding variety of life around us has evolved on the earth over millions of years this evolution doesn't happen within few days or years it happens millions of years however we do not have more than a tiny fraction of this time to try and understand all these living organisms so we cannot look at them one by one so instead we look for similarities among the organisms which will allow us to put them into different classes and then study different classes or groups as a whole so in order to make relevant groups to study the variety of life forms we need to decide which characteristics decide more fundamental differences among organisms this would create the main broad group of organism within these groups small subgroups will be decided by less important characteristics so attempts at classifying living things into groups have been made since time even since from the early time greek thinker aristotle i hope you all know about aristotle aristotle classified animals according to whether they live on land in water or in the air so this is a very simple way of looking at life that we did in your early uh, childhood in your lkg ukg wild animal domestic animals and birds insects like that we classify animals around us but it will misleading too for example animals that live in the sea what are all the animals that live in the sea you can list out corals whales octopuses uh, starfish shark etc yes we can immediately see that these are very different from each other in numerous way 
in fact their habitat is the only point they share in common they are living in sea that is the habitat that habitat is the only point they share in common but this is not an approximate way of making group of organisms to study and think about so you are moving to higher classes so you have to uh, find a fine uh, fine way of classification find way, fine way of differentiating animals we therefore need to decide which characteristics to be used as the basis for making the broadest divisions then we will have to pick the next set of characteristics for making subgroups within these divisions this process of classification within each group can then continue using new characteristics each time so new characteristics are grouped new characteristics are grouped under that new cat, cat, categories new characteristics characteristics are grouped so like that we are grouping we are grouping we are grouping divisions happens okay so before we go on grouping we should know what is characteristics what is classification so this is the definition for classification the method of arranging organisms into groups on the basis of similarities and differences is called classification carolus linnaeus a swedish botanist he generates a standard system for naming organisms in terms of genus and species so the scientist name is carolus linnaeus using latin words he is naming the animals and uh, living organisms so classification as we uh, see before the definition classification is uh, classification is the ordering of organism into groups on the basis of their similarities dissimilarities and relationship so under this classification the broad thing there are five kingdoms totally five kingdoms what are they monera protista fungi plantae and animalia so there are five kingdoms so kingdom is not the first one so living organisms are the first one the next step is dividing that living organisms into five kingdoms that are monera protista fungi plantae and animalia these groups are formed based on the cell structure mode of nutrition body organization and reproduction on the basis of hierarchy of classification the organisms are separated into smaller and smaller uh, smaller groups which form the basic unit of classification now we need to see about the taxa of living organisms uh, in a hierarchical uh, hierarchical order a uh, hierarchy of category let's see that category now it is in page number 200 in your textbook kingdom kingdom phylum class order family genus and species let's see that so dear children we should not change this hierarchy kingdom next phylum next class next order next family next genus next next species sometimes we may get confusion with this order so for that i would like to give you a mnemonic which will help you to memorize it easily first for kingdom let's have kids for kingdom kids kids phylum phylum prefer p k class cheese order over family fried genus green species spinach if you memorize this sentence it will help you to order write the proper order see i say kingdom phylum class order family genus species kids prefer cheese over fried green spinach that will help you in a great way okay next we shall see about kingdom which is the topmost in the hierarchy let's see that in your textbook they have given species at first but i would like to explain you first kingdom then i move on to species 
because in the previous page we have seen that there were five kingdoms in that kingdom uh, finally we have animalia so that animalia kingdom you are going to see in your ninth standard so what is kingdom it is the highest category and the largest division to which microorganisms plants and animals belong to so each kingdom is fundamentally different from one another but has the same fundamental characteristics in all organisms groups under that kingdom so there are five kingdoms as we have seen in this species genus family orders class phylum they have taken examples from the animalia kingdom itself not from the other uh, kingdoms like monera fungi okay so in your ninth standard you are going to deal with the animalia kingdom detailly okay let's move on to the species now it is the lowest taxonomic category for example the large indian parakeet that is nothing but parrot indian parrot its uh, binomial name is sitacula upata and the green parrot its binomial name is sitacula cramaria cramaria and or two different species of birds they belong to different species that is upatra and cramaria let's see it detailly see this is indian parrot lord indian parrot and this is green parrot for us everything comes under parrot we call everything as parrot ellade nama parrot parrot endra koopiduvom but what is the difference between these two parrots so uh, the scientist will not leave the single difference they will categorize each and everything consciously so this indian parrot has a pink color neck and it its um, tail adoda tail layum body layum there will be a pink color shade but in this uh, green parrot you cannot see pink color in its body also in it, its neck will be of black and pink color mixed color okay so that is the difference between these two parrots so they belong to different species they will not come under same species because they cannot interbreed they cannot interbreed so they comes under different species okay let's see this taxa of this um eupatra its kingdom is animalia its phylum is chordata its class is avis avis means nothing but birds its order is cetaciforums and its family is cetaculite and its genus is cetacula and its species is eupatra so this is indian parrot this is for um green parrot see from kingdom to genus it is same only the species name is differing because these species cannot inter interbreed so they comes under different species category next we need to see about um uh, one more point uh, see this difference in parrot kingdom phylum class order in the order in the class avis that is birds there are 10000 birds in the order cetaphorums there are 350 bird variety and in the family we can cat uh, next to the order the category starts cetacidae the cactus and birds popping up that belongs to some other family kakapo bird also you can see that comes belongs to some other family so in the family itself we can differentiate nam ana ellathai enna solluvom கிளி கிளி கிளின்னு பேர் சொல்லி சொல்லிடுவோம் பேரட் பேரட் பேரட்னு பட் இட் வில் நாட் பிலாங் டு த சேம் ஃபேமிலி இட் செல்ஃப் நெக்ஸ்ட் வி நீட் டு மைண்ட் அபவுட் ஸ்பீசிஸ் இந்த ஃபேமிலி இட் செல்ஃப் த வி கேன் சீ த டிஃப்ரென்சியேஷன் ஓகே ஸோ திஸ் ஆர் ஆல் த டிஃப்ரெண்ட் பேரட்ஸ் வி கேன் சீ தட் லீவ்ஸ் அரவுண்ட் அஸ் ஓகே நெக்ஸ்ட் வி நீட் டு சீ அபவுட் ஜீனஸ் ஃபார் ஜீனஸ் தே ஹாவ் டேக்கன் எக்ஸாம்பிள் ஃப்ரம் டாக் ஃபேமிலி it is a group of closely related species which constitute the next higher category called genus for example the indian wolf the indian wolf the binomial name is canis palips canis palips and indian jackal its binomial binomial name is canis oris so they are placed in the same genus canis but its species is different species is different so both are depending upon same genus other name for this indian jackal is golden jackal so it's uh, see this is kingdom phylum class order family genus up to genus the indian wolf and indian jackal shares same they comes under the same genus canis 
okay i would like to tell you some more animals under this canis family uh, wolf dog coyotes golden jackals these are all the some other animals which comes under this canis family uh, canis family for example canis familiaris canis familiaris means domestic dog its genus is canis but it comes under different different species familiaris canis latrans canis latrans is coyote uh, it comes under different species latrans but canis is its same genus canis lupaster canis lupaster is african golden wolf canis lupus canis lup lupus means golden gray golden wolf uh, sorry gray wolf canis simensis canis simensis is nothing but simian fox see red color belongs to one particular group pink color belongs to another particular genus and this purple color belongs to some other thing okay so these are all grouped and categorized like the differentiation and similarities okay next we need to see about family a group of genera with different uh, with several common characteristics form a family for example leopard tiger and cat shares some common category cat, sorry characteristics and belong to the large cat family felidae okay these are all comes under cat, cat family see this comes under dog family and this comes under cat family okay so this family name is felidae this family even subdivided into two families sub family is panthirinae another sub family is felinae felinae is the most common cats okay chinna puna vagai sarndathu so it it consists of 12 genera and 33 species whereas this panthirinae sub family consists of two genera and seven species that belongs to big big cats uh, for example i would like to take the uh, taxa of tiger and taxa of panther see they shares up to genus same thing in the species they divide panthera tigris here panthera pardus okay so in the species only they subdivided ana adoda totram parunga paakave ungalku difference kandupidichiruvinga but in the species category they differ okay that is family they belong to the same family uh, felidae is a family of mammals in the order of carnivora colloquially we can refer this carnivora as cats the felidae family have been split into three genera what are these genera um, panthera uh, asinonyx and felis felis is a small cat okay next we need to see about order for order in your textbook they have given an example about primates what are primates see this is primates in this in this uh, slide itself we can conclude that from human being to ordinary monkey everything comes under this primate category okay a number of related families having common characteristics are placed in an order in the introduction itself i have given the example of comparing human to monkey monkeys baboons apes and man all although belong to different families are placed in the same order primate since all these animals possess some common features they are placed in the same order what are the same common features they can, they share Uh, large brains first thing is large brains every this primates have a large brain and visual acuity and color vision they they can uh, identify the colors uh, very particularly a uh, shoulder girdle allowing a large degree of movement in the shoulder joint our four legs are uh, transferred into evolved into hands so all these primates can use their four legs that is hands very nicely in a useful way okay so primates range uh, what is the range it, it doesn't um, require particular size all should not be of the same size for example uh, one primate name is madam breath mouse lemur one primate name is madam breath mouse lemur its weight is 30 grams alone 
Eastern Gorilla, its weight is 200 kg. The very minimum weight Lemur, which is of 30 grams, comes under this, uh, under the order of primate. Also, Gorilla comes under the order of primate. Okay. So, these are all the primates we can see all around us. There are 190 to 448 species of living primates depending on which classification is used. So, the, here I have given you another slide which shows the classification of primates. Next, we need to see about class. Related, related or similar orders together form a class. The order of different animals like those of rabbit, rat, bats, whales, chimpanzees and humans share some common features such as presence of skin and mammary glands. Mammary glands are nothing but organ which secretes milk. Okay. So, all the category It may be bat. It may be whale. It may be human being. All comes under kutti potu pal kudukum. Palutical, mammary glands, which possess mammary glands. So, they are placed in class mammalia. So, what are the common features of mammals? Mammals have body hair that protect them from cold or sun. There are some exceptional cases. Mammals have three middle ear bones and that helps uh, and give them good hearing. Females have milk to feed their young one. Mammals take care of their young one. The order, the range is differing. Mammals are warm-blooded. These are all the important uh, common features in the category or in the class Mammalia. See here, this slide is about American black bear. See at the top, everything is American black bear. The top, everything is American black bear. Okay. So, how can we categorize the, this American black bear? Eukarya. Then it moves on to Animalia. Cardata. Mudhikalambi irukko. Next, Mammals. Mammals kula edallam varum paranga. All these things comes under mammal. Okay. Cardata ala idallam poyiru. These things will not come under mammal. Ye amdi na frog ala mutta pootu kunji parikko. Isn't it? So, that will not come under mammalia. So, cardatala, they will share the same place. But when we consider about the young ones, uh, we can differentiate these things from the animals. So, they categorized under the class mammalia. Then, carnivora, they come under carnivora. Okay, like that, its order, class. Now, we are seeing class. Okay. Then family, genus, species, moves on. Is it clear? I hope you can understand about this class. Next phylum. Classes where which are related with one another constitute a phylum. The classes of different animals like mammals, birds, reptiles, frogs, fishes constitute the phylum. Here the phylum is nothing but, uh, the basic phylum is nothing but chordata. We can call them as vertebrata. Uh, chordata means which have a notochord or backbone. These things comes under this chordata. See this picture again comes under chordata, phylum. Phylum name is chordata. Everything has a backbone. It may be a bone, it may be anything, okay. But it has a string, bone. So it is chordata. Mudhunan irko. Okay. So all the things comes under the kingdom animalia, the kingdom animalia. As we have already seen, there were five kingdoms. Here, the kingdom is animalia. Next, we need to see about section 17.1.1. Before that, let's uh, let's move on to this uh, flow chart. Classification of kingdom animalia based on fundamental features. See, see this flow chart thoroughly. This uh, here here kingdom is placed. What is the next stage of kingdom as in the taxa? After kingdom, phylum is coming. So, what are they? So, the kingdom is further classified into phylum based on these properties. Here, these three things are properties on which the kingdom is subdivided as phylums. 
okay so first property is level of organization level of organization means it may be in the cellular level itself unicellular or cellular level level itself uh, the next uh, division can be it may the or the organisms may develop into tissue range organ range and organ system range so based on that the level of organization we can classify them into two categories cellular level and tissue or organ system the, in this cellular level only one phylum will come in this cellular level only one phylum will come that is porifera we we are going to see that porifera later first uh, we study the flow chart then move on to the explanation okay so the level of in the second category of level of organization is organ system based on the organ system we can further divide them into two one is radial that is symmetry next property is symmetry first level of organization under that category we categorize animals into two types cellular level and organ system level cellular level there is there is only one phylum that is porifera and next we move on to the another uh, another characteristics that is called as symmetry based on symmetry we can classify animals as radially symmetrical and bilaterally symmetrical radially symmetrical bilaterally symmetrical radially symmetrical in radially symmetrical only one phylum will come what is that nidaria radially symmetrical this nidaria only come okay the remaining things and all having bilateral symmetrical all these things having bilateral symmetrical things okay so uh, everything has the bilateral symmetrical means how can we further classify them so we need to move on to the third characteristics that is known as coelom or body cavity coelom or body cavity let's see the explanation later first see the flow chart so body cavity acelomate pseudocelomate coelomate acelomate pseudocelomate coelomate according to that acelomate consists of this one and pseudocelomate consists of this one and coelomate consists of all these things let's see them one by one later before, before seeing the explanation let's see each um, property one by one okay level level of organization animals are grouped as unicellular and multicellular based on cell tissue organ and organ system level of organization next we need to see about symmetry it is a plane of arrangement of body parts radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry are the two types of symmetry sometimes uh, there will be no symmetry at all in radial symmetry the body parts are arranged around the central axis if the animal is cut through the central axis in any direction it can be divided into smaller halves similar halves for example hydra jellyfish starfish in bilateral symmetry the body parts are arranged along the central axis if the animal is cut through the central axis we get two identical halves let's see some more example there are species which don't have symmetry there are species which don't have symmetry some are radially symmetry if you cut down radially at any direction you can have the same body part everywhere this this is bilateral symmetry along the central axis alone you can cut down them okay these are all examples for unicellular organisms level of organization the first category we have seen isn't it that is unicellular organisms okay all these things comes under that unicellular that is uh, porifera category here i have shown you the difference between unicellular and multicellular organisms uh, as an extra point if you like if you want to learn you can learn so this is how we can classify this level of organi organization unicellular organization of or all of this kind and multicellular multicellular organs will have different tissue different cell kinds for different operation in the body 
red blood cells which conduct the oxygen uh, smooth muscle cells fat cells this is epithelial cell which is in the skin and uh, for different action different kinds of cells are there in multicellular organisms so these slides will help you to understand the level of organization very well this slide and this uh, this slide this three slides this this and this will help you to learn the level of organization very well now let's see the difference between radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry radial symmetry generates identical body hops around the central axis whereas the bilateral symmetry generates only two sides as left and uh, right along the uh, sagittal plane body cannot be divided into left or right side here the sagittal plane divides the body into left and the right side similar body parts are arranged in the regular manner around the central axis similar body parts are arranged in the both left and right sides of equally the development of a head is uh, in front of the body is rare thala mela and the head irukad in front of the body there will be no head the development of a head in front of the organism's body is a, a prominent feature in bilateral symmetry Uh, some examples has given been has been given for radial symmetry at the, as the lowest point and bilateral symmetry uh, this is not in your textbook i give you as extra information because most of you have a very big ambition to become a doctors and some other competitive exams you are going to write so it will be very helpful if you learn extra points along with the uh, along with your textbook okay next we need to see about germ layer germ layer are formed during the development of an embryo these layers give rise to different organs as the embryo becomes an adult okay organisms with different germ layer the ectoderm and the endoderm are called uh, diploblastic animal example hydra organism with the three germ layer ectoderm mesoderm endoderm are called triploblastic animal example rabbit so a group of cells in a embryo that interact with each other as the embryo develops and contribute the formation of all the organisms and organs and tissues or germ layer so some animals will have two layers alone those animals are called diploblastic animals the name of the two layers are ectoderm and endoderm some animals will have three layers ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm see here here two layers has been shown and three layers has been shown okay this is diploblast this is triploblast this is endo endo means inside exo means outside meso means middle okay ecto ectoderm the outer layer here the meso derm is there in the triploblast but in the non living layer but in the diploblast between endoderm and endoderm there is a layer but it is a non living layer it is not a living layer okay i hope you understand about germ layers so based on this germ layers animals are uh, classified as diploblastic animals and triploblastic animals diploblastic and triploblastic animals next we need to see about coelom what is coelom it is a fluid filled body cavity it separates the digestive tract from the body wall a true body cavity or coelom is one that is located within the mesoderm we have seen the body layer mesoderm isn't it in that mesoderm only this coelom will be located based on the nature of the coelom animals are divided into three groups what are they one is acelomate another one is pseudocelomate another one is coelomate okay a coelomate pseudo coelomate coelomate what is that a coelomate do not have a body cavity it will not have a body cavity example tapeworm what is pseudo coelomate here the mesoderm is there so it has a false body cavity it has a false body cavity example round worm okay what is coelomate it has a true coelom like earthworm it has a true coelom like earthworm so animal kingdom is further divided into two groups based on the 
backbone that is vertebrates and invertebrates vertebra or invertebra sorry vertebrate and invertebrate chordata we can call the vertebrata as chordata animals which do not possess notochord are called invertebrates or non chordates animals which possess notochord or backbone are called chordates so these are all the examples for vertebrates and these are all the example for invertebrates okay next we need to see about the binomial nomenclature carolus linnaeus introduced the method of naming animals with two names known as binomial nomenclature the first name is called genus and the first letter of the genus is denotes in capital and the second one is called species name and denotes in small letter the binomial nomenclature of some common animals has been given below so amoeba amoeba proteus and starfish asterius rubens Uh, peacock pavo crustaceous for tiger panthera tigress these are all, for man homo sapiens these are all the common binomial names for commonly seen next we need to see about the difference in invertebrata we shall see it in a different another video i hope you enjoy today's lesson god bless you all the best